And here we are, the bungalow bar. And look at that mess, Hal. Huh? It's not a business at all. Sign that says danger, keep out. Nobody can even go in there. They have no more money to finish the remodel. And that Memorial Day weekend, I'm told they do 100,000 on sales. But they're not open for summer. They're done. A New York beach town bar pummeled by Superstorm Sandy finds a television fairy godfather of sorts to help it rebuild. The resurrection of Bungalow Bar and Restaurant marks the most ambitious and expensive project of Spike TV's bar rescue show yet. Join us right now is the show's host, John Tapper, and one of the owners of Bungalow, Terrence Tuberty. Thanks, guys, for Thank being you. here. Great to be here. John, let me just ask you, how did you find and pick Bungalow for this latest project? You guys, uh, you go back to, uh, on air on, in October. Yes. Well, I'm from Long Island. So, so Near the and dear to your heart what happened out there last you year. You bet. Yeah. And it hurt me in my heart. So we made a concerted effort to find a hurricane victim bar. And the fact is, Terrence and his brothers were in a really difficult situation. It was a typical example of the crisis there driving through the community, the devastation. It was just a big example of how bad it is, and we wanted to bring attention to it. And tell us, Terrence, I mean, you know, I, I was out in Long Beach, I was in Rockaway afterward. I mean, the, the devastation was just, and it's, and it's still, there's still places that have not been able to reopen. Mm -hmm. What happened to you all specifically? Well, specifically, our place of business was destroyed. and. Uh, my family uh, is mostly from that area and their houses were destroyed. And so right after the storm, we put off rebuilding the bar until January, February of this past year. And uh, we put all of our money in and uh, thankfully Bar Rescue came through in about May uh, to put a sh push, push us over the finish line. Tell us what you've done for this particular bar to help them sort of get over the, the, the hurdle here. It was a unique situation. If they didn't open by Memorial Day weekend, yeah. the summer would be lost. Right. So we had five days to redo electrical, plumbing, rebuild a kitchen, rebuild two bars, put in computer systems, lighting systems, menus, recipes, logos, glassware, right. inventory. It was the biggest rescue we've ever done. And for but, people who don't watch the show, you help in the, in the way of you bring advice from all of your, your long years in the industry. You also bring financial help in the terms of getting them some of the systems put back in you place bet. and things like that through, through your sponsors, I yep. assume. Now, you have tackled on the show everything from like bartenders who drink out of shoes to like really bad music. <laughs> what is like the biggest and the stupidest mistakes you see these bar owners make? And I'm not necessarily talking about you, but I'm talking about in general. <laughs> you know, You're perfect. We all make them. You know, if, if you were into drugs, I wouldn't suggest you be a pharmacist. Okay, gotcha. And too many people that enjoy drinking, enjoy social life, get into the bar business yeah. and the fact is it's a hard business Terrence knows that sometimes 20 hours a day right. and, and you got to love the business not being in a bar to be successful at it and you got to watch your employees too I mean you've probably uh, had this in your establishments because mm -hmm. I know you all I think you own more than one one establishment how do you make sure the employees aren't drinking as much or more than they're, they're doling out some days well it's costs yeah you know what cost percentages you should run if you don't hit those numbers, for example, 21% of beverage cost, if it right. goes over that, you know the money's going out the door somehow. Good point. Either they're overpouring, yeah. putting money in their pocket, but Terrence and I well know if we're not active managers, we have partners we don't know about. And it's our job to keep people honest. The music is such a big deal. I mean, you instinctively know that when you walk into a restaurant or a bar. How do you got like? How do you judge? Like, what's the right tempo? What's the appropriate tempo for music in a bar? Interesting, you ask that. I own the only patent ever issued by the federal government for music management to achieve a desired ambiance in a hospitality property. That sounds like the patent write-up right there. Exactly, exactly <laughs> correct. It, music is a science of beats per minute curves right. and content curves. If I'm too low for too long, you're boring. You leave. If my energy is too high, too long, you get tired, you leave. Mm -hmm. So I have to take you through an energy change, and then I have to target the music and content, rock, hip hop, classic, country, to fit your demo. In reality, I'm trying to play the song you heard on your first kiss. So that it triggers me to feel happy, want to you stay bet. there, and you drink bet. more, and It's buy really more. not the music, it's the reaction the music makes. What would you guys have done if the show hadn't come along? Uh, we would have opened, you would have. Um, but it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been as, as, as good. Uh, really, John, John's an analytical guy. He's a numbers guy. But what he did for us in Rockaway Beach and Breezy Point was he opened us up to a national audience, um, something that our city and state government hasn't done. And uh, I couldn't ask John. I mean, the money, the amount of money that we made this summer doesn't matter. Hmm. It's that focus of, of Rockaway Beach, uh, this beachfront community in New York City. 
Three things between the two of you, if you were going to tell people who think, aside from the fact that if, if you have a drinking problem, don't open a bar, but people thinking about, I, I want to start a bar, this sounds great, I watched this show, I could do this, what were, what, are, what are three tips you would give to think about before you do it? Well, the first is it's not a retail store. Products spoil by the minute. They can be over poured and wasted. So the bar business is managing costs by the moment. That's very unique. It's very high pressure. Profits don't naturally come in a bar business. People think, ah, that liquor only costs 50 cents, they're making yeah. a fortune. There's rent, there's utilities, there's insurance, there's a million other costs attached to it. Bars are not inherently profitable. You can lose a lot of money in a bar. You have to be able to manage costs and you have to have the money to ride the bumps when you don't. So I tell people all the time, they open bars for the first time and they run out of money before they learn how to manage it. Very, very good point. What about your Well, the best end? analogy I can say about a bar is uh, it's like a baby and you're going to hold it and cradle it and it's going to wake you up, it's going to want to get fed, it's going to cost you money. And eventually the baby gets older and starts telling you what it is. And if you don't start listening to it and changing and making those changes to that behavior of that restaurant, then you're going to fail. All and right, guys, thanks so much for being here. I look forward to seeing the show when it opens in October. Appreciate you both you. being here.